Whoa! All right, <laughs> go slow, go slow. Hey, I'm Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today we're going to be changing the bulbs on the top of a tennis court light. These are about 24 foot poles, but thankfully they're breakdown poles, which means that the bulb's coming to me, I'm not going to the bulb. I do have a story to tell you at the end of this of how I absolutely destroyed myself, uh, not understanding all the implications of tennis court lights. So uh, here's how it works. We're using a length of rope. Larger is better, not necessarily for the weight rating, but for the holding power, the, the ease of gripping the rope with your hands. Um, I'm gonna thread it through the welded eye bolt here and tie it off. Simple double square knot, it's gonna be good. Channel locks to remove the very large, very hard to turn bolt. There we go, there we go. And of course you know what I'm gonna do to make this possible to remove and reinstall with ease season after season, decade after decade. That's right, you guessed it. Extra points for you, no locks. So the pull is pretty stable. I should probably be careful just in case, but um, I happen to know that these poles are pretty stiff and uh, it takes quite a bit of effort to move them. So I've got my, my rope tied on, I'm wearing my gloves. I don't have an excessive amount of weight on the top of this pole. Let's say I had two old fixtures, some ballasted like high pressure sodium or metal halide fixtures that are all too common to uh, older tennis courts like this. Um, there could be a couple of hundred pounds on the top of that pole displacing the equilibrium. So uh, I think I'm ready to rock here. These fixtures are halogen, shouldn't be too bad. 254 millimeter, um, what are they? I better pull this out of my pocket before I break it. There, there's the bulb right there. 1500 watt bulbs. When I turn on my tennis court lights, literally I'm drawing more power out here than the entire house combined. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna position myself um, opposite the path of this section of the pole. If you can see here that there's, a, um, there's an overlay of the pole, of the core pole itself, it's gonna swing out that way. The pivot is at about 13 and a half feet, and uh, so I'm going to position myself so I'm out of the path of the fall of the light. I don't want this thing coming down on my head. Uh, if I'm concerned about the weight, I'm gonna either tie the rope off so that it can only go a certain distance, um, let's say it gets out of my control, or I'm gonna enlist a couple buddies to help me, and I'm actually gonna wrap the rope around my, <laughs> around my butt so that um, my full weight and not just the strength of my hands are holding this pole and keeping it from accelerating out of control. So, here it goes. See, I told you the pole's pretty stiff. Uh, here it goes, easy. It's gonna hit a, uh, a critical point at which it wants to kind of take off on me, so. <laughs> here it goes, here it goes. Woo! I can feel it. Uh, it's starting to put some weight on. There it is. There it is. Not too bad. Not too bad. Whoa! All right. <laughs> go slow. Go slow. Oh. <laughs> My butt's on fire! <laughs> ah! Not as bad as last time. Woo! There it is. It came to rest. We're good. We survived. So what happened last time, I was an apprentice. I was in my second year. There was, oh, I don't know, 250 pound light, worth of lights up there. I was not wearing gloves. I was using a small rope like this. I was completely naive. Like I looked at the pole, figured out the functionality, but completely naive as to what's about to happen. So the pole starts to move. I get it in motion and it takes off. <laughs> I am yanked off the ground. I, my feet are dangling about 12 feet in the air, holding onto this tiny little rope, no gloves. My hands are burning, I'm bleeding. I've been sliced by the rope. I'm too high up to drop. So I start to climb down the rope with bloody, ripped open hands. And finally, when my feet are about eight, 
<laughs> eight feet off the ground. I drop into the grass and leaves. Ow, oh, I was in so much pain at, for like three weeks. Mm. One thing about bulbs that get really hot like halogens is I'm gonna be real intentional to keep my hands and even my gloves off the bulb itself because I don't wanna have oil or dirt that attracts heat and causes a premature failure of the bulb. This is a toolless replacement here. Pop open the clips. Not gonna hold itself open. I'm gonna take a little bit of this right here. Take the old bulb out. And it's spring loaded, so there's one direction in which you depress the bulb. In this case, it happens to be to the right outside. I'm gonna depress the bulb and then remove it. Um, and here goes the new bulb. I'm gonna peel back the uh, packaging from each side. I'm gonna install it in that same order. To the right, I'm gonna feel that spring give place. To the left, I'm gonna make sure, I wanna, this is, this is a high powered unit right here, this is 1500 watts. Um, that is, <clears throat> like half as much as your air conditioner, one of these bulbs, right? <laughs> or maybe a third, depending on the size of the unit. Um, and I'm gonna install it uh, so that, I wanna make sure that the pins are really well seated on each end. I don't want it to be, there's actually quite a bit of latitude in there. I don't want it to not be placed. So if you give it a wiggle, um, because of the pressure from the outside and the spring on this end, it's naturally gonna kind of fall into the, uh, the, the depressions, the groove. Um, I'm gonna clip it closed and before, I go through the effort of hoisting this thing back into the air, which is going to be a little bit of a task. I'm going to hit the lights and make sure everything works while it's on the ground. Okay, so I am on a personal mission to eradicate incandescent bulbs. I've made an exception at the tennis court because the cost of LEDs, a little bit higher. The performance actually, as far as light output, a little bit lower. And these tennis court lights are literally used like 90 minutes a year. <laughs> so there's not an ROI, it's not a justified investment. So I did go the cheap route. These bulbs, five, six bucks on Amazon, and uh, I had a total of eight of them to replace, so it was really low cost. I wanna introduce you to uh, my drink of choice today. This is Block Party, uh, link in the description. It's uh, brewed hot, flash chilled, snap chilled, which is a proprietary process. I think if they told us, they'd have to kill us. And so you have all of the the yum of hot coffee in a shelf-stable cold beverage. Hmm. Can't forget my no locks. Put the pretty side out. That nut is gonna grab my no locks and just work it right in to all the threads. Beautiful. I don't need to death grip this. It's not going anywhere. Much easier than last time. Hey, join us for the next video on replacing your air conditioner disconnect right here.